future Mark here. I just wanted to point out a grave error in this interview. My guest's name is Pierangelo Tomasi. When I get introduced to Pierangelo right before the interview, I was also introduced right about the same time to a gentleman named Giancarlo. Somehow I combined the two names and I was calling my guest Giancarlo Pierangelo. I didn't catch this until after the interview and Pierangelo was in the room getting ready for the master class. So after the class, I made sure to approach him and apologize for this error. Now, Pierangelo was so gracious. He said he didn't want to correct me on video, and I really appreciate that. So I just wanted to apologize to Pierangelo publicly and also to my viewers because I've never really done anything like this that I can remember where I really, really messed up someone's name like this. Uh, I mean, I've had other errors, obviously, but nothing to this level. Now, you also hear me say that I there'll be a second video. There is no second video. Uh, there was enough material from the interview really to cover everything. Uh, and it just wasn't conducive to make a second video with the event. And that's really it. So just enjoy this great interview with Pierangelo Tomasi of Tomasi Wines and Familie Storige. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you smash that like button and hitting subscribe. Every like and subscription really helps build the channel. Even better, tell your friends about the best wine show anywhere. All right, so I've got uh, Giancarlo Piangelo with Tomasi, right? Correct. Um, and we're here actually for the Familia Storica event uh, featuring the historical families of Amarone, specifically Amarone. This is coming out of the Veneto region uh, of Italy. I'm super excited. I'm here in Houston at Hotel Zaza. Uh, you can kind of see the background. You know, the I have enough light for us, so that's also really important. But we're on the 11th floor, so great view. You can't really see much of it. But we're going to do a, I'm going to be doing a little master class. Jeremy Parson, who uh, you've seen many, 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 many years ago on my show with uh, Joe Buonacontri uh, back in San Antonio. He's going to be leading that class. And then we have a tasting afterwards. So um, Giancarlo, kind of give us a little background about you. And then let's kind of talk about the event and maybe Tomasi and how all that works in. Well, thank you very much for having me here. Yeah, and I'm absolutely. very happy to be back in Houston. Uh, I can tell you my very first trip to the United States back in 1997, August 1997, actually started in Houston. So the very first city in this country where, by, uh, where, I, where I put my, my, say my feet on, yeah. on the ground. We missed each other by a month. I lived here and then I left in July to go to someplace else. <laughs> Uh, well, myself, actually, I represent the fourth generation of uh, Tomasi family states. I'm uh, actually the CEO of the company, and uh, I've been uh, looking after uh, the business, uh, uh, the export sales business, I would say, of our company for a very long time. And, uh, well, today I'm here not only representing our company, Tomasi, but more importantly, representing as a president, as the current president, this group, uh, uh, Familia Storica, Historic Families. What is that? That is a group of 13 family-owned wineries from the same region, from the Valpolicella area. We're all close friends. We're we are actually colleagues. We're also competitors in a way, yeah. Oh, because yeah. We, we in fact we compete, but we all compete with the mission to trade up. And uh, going back to the region where we are from, we are historic producers of one of the leading Italian red wines called Amarone. And the reason why we're here today is because we like to travel together every now and then and organize uh, uh, seminars, I mean, uh, master classes and walk around tastings to introduce ourselves as individual producers, but more importantly, as a group. And when you work as a group so closely together, you can definitely achieve important goals. And then our main goal is to make Amarone be recognized more and more as a fine wine and a wine that deserves to be to be classified as one of the top red wines known worldwide. I can tell you, I already have that opinion. I love Amarone. Um, I don't drink enough of it, but I love Amarone. And uh, that's why I'm super excited to be here. Uh, we talked about, like, you know, this is my video during my studies. So if I did pass that theory exam, uh, which I still don't know yet, by the time you see this, I will, I will know. Um, I 
We'll take the next two portions of that exam in July. Um, and very likely, Amarone could be one of, the one of the wines I might have to identify in a deductive or a blind tasting. So this is really how I study. I'm really here as a, I mean, I'm really here for, for, for this to do some media stuff, but I'm really here secretly to study. Uh, and I'll be back in two weeks for another, for another event uh, for a different region in Italy. Same idea. I mean, for three weeks, I'm doing, doing these types of things. I'm going to places to study about whatever the wine region is. So I'm excited to do this. I'm excited to uh, do the seminar and uh, do the tasting. So for the people who don't know what Amarone is, how is that different than the other wines that are produced in the Valpolicella region? Well, let's point, point uh, actually Valpolicella area on the map. Uh, we're part of Veneto, as you mentioned in the very beginning, so the northeast uh, of Italy. Uh, the city is Verona, uh, very well known as uh, the romantic city of Romeo and Juliet. Never heard of them. <laughs> and no, northern, <laughs> the northern part of the city of Verona is yeah. this region geographically known as Valpolicella, where you produce, uh, you work with some local indigenous grape varieties, a few actually. And uh, the characteristic of Amarone that make it very unique is that the grapes have to dry it with air circulation for at least 100 days before they are actually crushed. So rather than picking and crushing and then fermenting, you have to go through this long process where the grapes, uh, again, by water evaporation, they lose a lot of weight. They concentrate the natural, uh, with natural sugar. Mm -hmm. And then in January, uh, you start the fermentation process, which takes the wine through a long period of fermentation and then aging in barrels until you bottle it as a, as a dry wine, uh, full-bodied, very complex, with a nice freshness, in particular when the, the wine is still in a way relatively young, but in the same time with a very long aging potential. And this brings me back to the main thematic of the masterclass today. Today, it, we're talking about Amarone, fine and contemporary. So fine, because as I mentioned earlier, we definitely consider Amarone a wine that deserves to be classified as one of the finest wine from Italy, but with, I would say more in general from, from the world. And contemporary, which means that it is not a wine that you can only have in certain occasions, mm -hmm. but that is definitely a wine that you can have, you can enjoy it with a wide variety of food. Uh, it really matches the uh, worldwide international cuisine. And again, depending on the vintage of the wine, it, it's better to match with something or, or something else. And the event today with this group will actually include 13 Amarone, obviously, mm -hmm. starting with 2017 vintage, which is the youngest one, all the way through 2004. Nice. So a wide variety of vintages to really confirm how contemporary the Amarone is. I, uh, last year, I actually had, and I, I'll be honest, I actually don't remember, I'm actually, I'm assuming this producer is part of 13, but they may not be, but they, I had a 67 Amarone. Oh, here you go. Uh, and it was fantastic. Here we go. It was a birth year wine and 67 as a general rule, isn't really a great vintage worldwide, but there's certain pockets where you do well. And as a, as some winemakers told me in another, another part of the world, if you know how to make wine, you can still make good wine from not so great vintages. Yeah, it's just that. That's for sure. Yeah. It, it, when it's a great vintage, it's a lot easier for, say, someone like me who doesn't know what I'm doing. I could probably make a, a decent wine, but people like you make spectacular wines. And then if the vintage isn't so bad, you're still making great wine because you, you've well, experienced. And yeah. you see, and the, the experience for sure, but also the fact that uh, when, when you base your production in, in qualified quality vineyards that it's all about. Absolutely. I mean, terroir is what really makes a difference in the end. Yeah, I was in Napa, so we were, you already have quality vineyards there. So it wasn't like they were making wines from that Central Valley area where the bulk wine, I mean, you're not making great wine from a bad vintage from those grapes. Uh, as the story goes, you can make great wine from great white, great grapes. You can make bad wine from great grapes, but you can't make great wine from bad grapes. Not at all. You just, you, you can't do it. You can do it, um, I agree. But yeah, uh, that's so. I have a big love of Amarone. It, it was way before I had the '67. I mean, it's been one of my favorites. So again, I, I, I've already said I'm excited a million times. So um, uh, so yeah, we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna have the class about all that. Uh, and then we're gonna have that walk around tasting. Um, and yeah, we're gonna have from 2004 to 2017. Yeah. So 17 is the current release. Um, Say, so there's enough there. You have to have a minimum amount of aging before you can release correct, it. Correct. You see, you, when you talk about the Amarone 
uh, as such, it is minimum requirement two years of barrel aging. Mm -hmm. And if you add on top of that the previous 100 days of drying and so on and so forth, technically you don't release a new vintage before four years, basically okay. from the harvest. When you talk about the Amarone Reserva, mm -hmm. so the sort of a higher classification, there the minimum aging uh, required by law is four. So that means that you don't release that vintage before technically six years from the harvest. Okay. So 2017 for a non reserva is most likely the current vintage. I would say 17 and 18, okay. as we're speaking, are the current vintage. Yeah, so we're kind of in the middle of the year. So yeah, correct. Um, so kind of explain you 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 explained about like how the concentration of fruit with with uh, with concentration of the sugars, natural sugars. Like please realize natural. this is we're not adding stuff. I have people all the time. Anyway, that's a different story. Um, but what is that? What is that doing to uh, one? Well, what is it doing to the flavors? But what is it doing to the to the yield? How how is that affecting how much wine you're actually going to make out of those grapes? Well, I go back to your previous uh, point about viticulture and uh, high end vineyards and so on and so forth. Uh, let me say that the yield in terms of grapes per per mm -hmm. acre or per hectare is quite low comparing to the other wines mm -hmm. that you can make in the same area. That said, you on average, after drying, you lose basically between 40 to 50% according to the evaporation of the water. And therefore, the concentrated juice is quite limited in terms mm -hmm. of yield, in terms of quantity, actually. Right. That means then when you go through the fermentation, the juice can get a lot of extractions from the dry grape skins. And by the way, if the question is, why can you make the grapes dry so long in the Valpolicella area? Mm -hmm. Yes. The secret is all in the thickness of the skin. Okay. So we work with primarily four indigenous grape varieties that I mentioned, Corvina, Corvinone, Rondinella, Oseleta, I had a fifth one, Molinara. They're all like kind of cousins, sort of, or sister grapes with slightly different characteristics, but all of them have one thing in common. The skin is very thick. And by that, you can dry them for so long and get the result of a concentrated juice. So going back to vinification and process and so on and so forth, the juice get a lot of extractions from the dried skins. Mm -hmm. And then the aging let the wine really uh, uh, kind of transform a lot of the sugar into alcohol, become mm -hmm. a sort of a dry wine. And, and at the same time, uh, it is a combination of fruitness, but at the same time, nice acidity that make the wine standing and lasting long. Right. And uh, with a very good structure, quite of a full body wine though. It reminds a lot uh, to cherries mm -hmm. in, yeah. in particular, I would say, because I mean, but Pulicella is also known as the land of cherries. Okay. But at the same time, right, the, more, yeah. the more the grapes dry and the more the wine ages, you can get a lot of flavors of, of black blackberries, I mean, tobacco, and many other kind of flavors, which are also very much depending on the characteristic of each winery's vineyards mm -hmm. and method of vinification and aging, type of barrels used in the aging process, and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, so with the Familia Storica, so uh, you're, in, you're in the country uh, this year, you're here, and you're going to a couple other cities? We, where else, where else have you, you've already been somewhere, right? Exactly. Yeah. We had this uh, type of event uh, on Monday, uh, two days ago in Manhattan, New York. Okay. Uh, we are here today. We're going to fly to Miami and have the event in Miami tomorrow. Okay. So three cities in one week. All right. Hey, that sounds cool to me. Um, and probably lots of really great food and wine going on with that. So uh, is this something that you try to do on a frequent basis? Well, as part of the, say, general agreement that we have as a group is mm -hmm. to organize uh, once every year uh, a sort of international event. Yeah. So this year we decided to actually come back in the United States. Our last time as a group in the United States was pre before Corona. Okay. Uh, so that was actually in 2018. All right. And glad to be back. Uh, we will most likely come back next year as well, as we all consider as individual business, but also as a group business, we consider the United States definitely a market that deserves our presence. And we are very happy to be here cool. once again. To come uh, back Houston here. specifically seems to be a really good market for, for well, Italian wine in general, but Amarone, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. And this brings me back to the very first time I, I got here, as I mentioned earlier, 1997, and it's always been a great market ever since. 
So one of the reasons why we chose uh, Houston, uh, specifically Houston in the whole state of Texas, is because we know that this market is very uh, actually good for Amarone and and uh, uh, interested in learning more about Amarone and an event like today is made for that reason. Yeah, I've seen that over the, the year. I mean, I did live here in the 90s. I actually didn't really. Wine was honestly the last thing in my mind when I lived here. I I was in, I liked other beverages. Uh, and wine was, for me, something I didn't really fall in love with until like 2005. And I moved back to Texas in 08. But I, I've come to Houston several times for these types of events. And I mean, I can tell you it's a lot of definitely a lot of interest in in this style of wine in, Italian wine in general but definitely this style of wine I've seen it over the years and if I may say something mm -hmm. actually uh, we the 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 main th theme today from the group is to talk about Amarone in particular with the master class yes but as we will continue then in the second section with a walk around tasting every producer is presenting their other wines made in the from the Valpolicella area that'd be cool that means Ripasso that means Valpolicella so this is a good market not only for Amarone, but for all the wines produced from the Valpolicella region. I'm definitely looking forward to that because I definitely don't drink enough of, of that of the group. So uh, let's touch a little bit on Tomasi uh, specifically. Um, so kind of give us a little bit of background on them and, and all that. Well, I mean, uh, our company was actually, um, uh, created and launched by my great-grandfather back in 1902. So we are celebrating our 120 uh uh, over anniversary, actually. Okay. Uh, I should count, actually. And something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, something. Thank you. Uh, and uh, as I say, I represent the fourth uh, generation. I'm not alone. I actually have a bunch of uh, cousins and sisters that are part of, the, of this generation. And we are uh, one of the most historic producers of Amarone and in general, the Pulicella wines. But over the years, we decided to become more like a, an Italian wine company more than just a Valpolicella wine company in okay. the sense that we expanded with many projects in Italy as today our estates group include eight wineries in eight different regions in okay. Italy, where Valpolicella still represent the, the, the core business if you will but at the same time we are proud to produce wines from other regions as well and uh, we started exporting wines to United States back in 1971 so we're not, I was not even born back then, and the uh, United States remained to be our number one market. Uh, so what can I say? We are a very dynamic uh, company, uh, proud to be uh, one of the most solid, consistent Italian wineries with a good success, but with many projects ahead of us, and I can promise you that we, you will hear talking about Tomasi a lot more moving forward. Awesome. Well, John Carl, I know we got to get going here. Uh, the master class starts in nine minutes, so we're going to wrap this up. I really, really appreciate you spending some time my, with me. My pleasure. Uh, I'm looking forward to finding out a little bit more about Amarone and, and definitely trying all your wines uh, and with everybody else. So, folks, that's going to do it for today's episode. As always, uh, make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, tell all your friends about it, tell them all about the best wine show anywhere, and uh, just – Housekeeping real quick, you probably are seeing this right after all the Swiss wine stuff. So I promise you the Uruguayan wines are coming. They are fantastic. Nine of those, well, eight wines, one vermouth. That was so good. I'll tell you about that later. Um, and uh, I'll probably have more video about this event, either within this or a separate video. So they're still coming. I just want to make sure I inserted this so it wasn't August when this came out. Uh, that's it. And we'll see everybody next, uh, we'll see everybody next time.